Hey, good morning to you. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. Now, not only do we have this storm coming to the northeast, but now we have this potential flooding that's still occurring in the southeast and days of potential tornadoes. I will go through what you have and just give you a quick update. Sasha has grown greatly. <laughs> she has eaten all the food that we've been giving her. She is no longer thin, if, if you, whoever don't know. Uh, she was in the winter time and she was stuck out there with no food and she came to us for help. So she's looking great. <laughs> I just want to give you a quick update. Now, if you've never been here before, hello, my name is Mark. I do upload all year long. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you know when my videos do come out. I did a little later this morning. I wanted some updated information on this potential flooding and it's looking like it's going to be pretty bad for a lot of people. All I ask is if you know somebody in these impacts, please share this video on social media or at least just hit the like button. YouTube will suggest it for you. You know how the algorithm works. Helps us reach more people and alert more people. Thank you for your help. All links are in the description to help save you time. Now let's get to your forecast, guys. And what we're looking at here for the main picture is we have these two high pressures. We have this cold high pressure coming down. And I do have an update for your Arctic temperatures, guys, as well as this high pressure over in Atlantic Ocean. And this is going to pull all this moisture, all this precipitation from the Gulf through the southeast through these two high pressures. And it will get a surface low, become a storm in the northeast, and bring some potential snowfall to y'all as well. Now you can see with the NAM 3K that for today all the way till Thursday that we have this big line of storms that's going to go to the northeast and it is going to bring a lot of thunderstorms to the south and southeast for a couple of days bringing a lot of potential flooding. Now for today you do have thunderstorms and all of this green but you do have a chance for tornadoes today. It's a small chance it will be later this afternoon but you do have a 2% chance in this green for tornadoes for today and this will carry over for tomorrow. And the cities in the 2% area so far for today is Mobile, Alabama, Gulfport, Mississippi, Pensacola, Florida, Biloxi, Mississippi, and Ferry Pass, Florida. But you do have a marginal chance for flash flooding today. And all of this green, all the way from eastern Texas, all the way to Virginia, a chance for flash flooding marginal for today. For tomorrow, you do have a chance for thunderstorms and all of this green right here across Colorado and Utah as well. And across right here in this light green, this dark green is a marginal. And you do have a chance for tornadoes for tomorrow. You have a big 2% chance all the way from North Carolina all the way to lower Alabama. And here's your cities and states impacted by the tornado threat for tomorrow. Mobile, Alabama, Columbus, Georgia, Tallahassee, Florida, Savannah, Georgia, and Columbia, South Carolina. Now for tomorrow, you'll also have a marginal for flash flooding for tomorrow as well. All the way from the west bank of Louisiana, all the way past Myrtle Beach of South Carolina. All this marginal area is all flash flooding for tomorrow. Plus, Thursday going into Friday, we have another group of thunderstorms coming. It's going to add some more rainfall and some more thunderstorms. And you do have a chance for flash flooding once again for Thursday going into Friday in all this green area. I think there's going to be a serious flooding event, so let me go through, through this with you guys. For the first day, this is your precipitation amount, and all the blue is all a little over an inch for the light blue, but that pink to red starts getting an inch and a half towards two to two and a half inches of rainfall, and this is accumulating for day one. For tomorrow, it's going to be a little bit lower, and the heaviest part is going to be the Florida Panhandle and southern Alabama and Georgia. As you go Thursday into Friday, it's going to be a little bit lower again for southern Georgia, Florida, Panhandle once again. Then you're going to start adding up from Friday into Saturday when that other group of storms comes and adds more rainfall, mostly for southern Georgia and the Florida, Panhandle once again. So for the first 48 hours, the first two days, the heaviest rainfall of one to two plus inches of rainfall is central Mississippi, northern Alabama, northern Georgia, eastern Tennessee, and western North Carolina, like, like around Asheville area. You also have southern Alabama, Florida Panhandle, and southern Georgia. Then as you go to the three days, you can see it does build up even more for Georgia, Florida Panhandle, and goes into South Carolina. And it starts getting really heavy. That bright red starts going three to four inches of rainfall expected, mostly for the Florida Panhandle and southern Georgia. But when you go to five days, when you get to all the group of thunderstorms that passes by this weekend, also for the southeast, it adds up dramatic, severe flash flooding, especially for southeastern 
Alabama, Panhandle of Florida, all of northern Florida, all the way to Jacksonville and lower. Also, Georgia, southern Georgia, getting the worst of it as well, and South Carolina as well. And all that orange that you can see right there, if you can make that out, is all five to seven inches of rainfall. And this is all coming within a five-day period, guys. So First Alert 12 have put out this diagram for you, and this is the same thing that National Weather Service sees. And you can see you expected one to two inches of rainfall in all this light blue, getting towards this dark pink area towards Atlanta. But it starts getting really heavy once you go south and southeastern towards Jacksonville, where it goes two to three inches, three inches, four inches, and five inches plus, mostly for northern Florida and southeastern Georgia. Serious flooding. But you can see how you get these thunderstorms that's brewing up in southeastern Texas all morning long, and it starts going towards northern Louisiana with some heavy thunderstorms all the way till noontime. And you're not really having any precipitation in this area. Your dew points aren't even really that strong yet to get any severe weather, any chances for tornadoes. Now, as this goes all even long, it goes towards Mississippi, and this precipitation starts to really pull up. And I do think you can see a water spout or two, because that's where a lot of the action is going to be, plus along the coast of the Gulf. And you can see right around 5 p.m., you start getting these cells brewing up over southern Louisiana, and you start going towards Mississippi, and you can't see too much further. But you can see what your dew points, which is the particulates in the atmosphere, and you need this to get this precipitation, this moisture all to come together and create these storms to give your chances for tornadoes. And you can see that your 60s only go to lower Louisiana, mostly the West Bank. Your chances are going to be right here for southern Louisiana. And if you look, you'll see that your 60 dew points is all for southeastern Louisiana starting this afternoon. So none of that rain and thunderstorms this morning does anything. As it moves and gets really thick for southeastern Louisiana later tonight in southern Mississippi. But you can see that none of these storms get in that area when you get into all them dew points. And that's when you get a little bit of cape as well. And the cells don't start moving in really good until later tonight around 7, 8 o'clock. Then they start strengthening up across Louisiana. And that's when you have your chances for your tornadoes. But when you look at your cape, this is what gives you the lift and gives you what you need to get these tornadoes going. Not only with the shear to get your rotation, but there is speed shear in these storms as well. So it's not just directional shear. But still, your cape values is not strengthened up to where it could be enough for real strong thunderstorms, possible tornadoes to about 7 o'clock tonight. And then it starts growing for southeastern Louisiana. Then later tonight, by 10, 11 o'clock, it starts moving towards southern Mississippi. So you definitely need to watch out once you get into 6, 7 o'clock. Then you're starting to get that oomph that you need to help all these cells turn into possible tornadoes. As it comes in for 7, 8 o'clock, you can see they're still kind of weak. Could get a spin up of two of some water spouts as this moves east. But once you hit 9 o'clock, then that cape is starting to get strong, starting to get some strong dew points. The storms are strengthening up, and each one of these cells, any one of them could be a tornado warning as it comes through, mostly by 9 to 11 o'clock, and it's going to continue to move. That's all you can see with high-resolution rapid refresh. But you can see how you got them for the West Bank, you got them for the North Shore, and you got one for Southern Mississippi as well that's traveling through this evening. But when you check for your helicity, which is your wind direction change with height, which is exactly what a strong thunderstorm, a possible tornado is. And you can see right around 11 o'clock this morning, you get some strong storms ripping through central Louisiana, going through southern to central Mississippi. Very strong storms. But at that time, you don't have the cape that you need to make those into tornadoes. So it will be severe weather. It will be some th strong thunderstorms. It will not become tornadic to maybe 7 o'clock tonight to 11 o'clock and on. And you can see this here when you look at your shear. You can see that these storm cells do pass through all day long. But like I showed you with the dew point and the cape, it don't have all the energy that it needs to become tornadic. These will be severe thunderstorms as it passes through. But later on, when we start getting the dew points to strengthen up, congeal together a little bit where it's getting really thick and strong dew points, you do get these storms, especially around 9 o'clock, that is getting some shear. And these cells are moving through southeastern Louisiana and going towards southern Mississippi. Now, that's all you can see with high-resolution rapid refresh. I will show you more with the NAM. Now, you can see also with the NAM that as this storm passes through, then for tomorrow, it will go all evening along with this strong 
over 1100 Cape for Southern Alabama into the Panhandle of Florida all morning long. Then it's going to strengthen right back up, get some strong dew points, some good energy. This is your Cape. And you get over 1700 for the Florida Panhandle by 3 p.m. And it carries all the way to North Carolina with over 1200 for your Cape. So you definitely have the lift that you need to keep those thunderstorms going for all Wednesday. And when you look at your precipitation, you can see that there is a lot of storms that is training through for that morning. And you also can see with the dew points as we go through tonight into tomorrow morning that these strong 60 plus dew points carries all the way to the south and the southeast for all day for tomorrow as this cold front comes down. Very strong dew points for high thunderstorms and a lot of lightning. So all these storms all evening long goes through the southeast, mostly the upper half of the deep south. And then they'll start going towards Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, and towards Mid-Atlantic and the northeast. But while we're going into tomorrow, then these cells are going to carry all the way from southern Mississippi across southern Alabama. And as we go through our day, that's when it's really going to become a lot of these dew points are going to raise up. You're going to get these high 60 dew points for tomorrow carrying all the way to the southeast, and that is bringing your severe weather, guys. You have all these lines of thunderstorms passing through all evening long for tomorrow, and it will go all the way to North Carolina, South Carolina, and keep training these storms in between these two high pressures, bring a lot of precipitation. And by tomorrow evening, it'll be passing by North Carolina, stretched all the way out from Louisiana to North Carolina, and go all evening long with thunderstorms all night long giving you a lot of rainfall in the southeast guys a lot of rainfall adding up with this but tomorrow morning these cells really pop up for southern mississippi and southern alabama early morning hours as you go across to the very early morning you get that very good heating strong dew points by seven o'clock and you get some very strong cells that is getting some shear guys this is getting some shear in these cells and it is giving you chances for your tornadoes for tomorrow you see how it brews up really strong in these cells once you get about 2 a.m. So it will be overnight, looking at some nocturnals possibly. 3 a.m., this cell right here over Florida is getting some good shear over it. So you got to watch out for all these cells as it passes by. Very strong cells with a lot of shear on them, guys. This will be a good chance to be tornadic. You have the shear, you have the dew point, and you have the cape as well. The cape is some strong cape, and it is some good food for this to breathe guys look at this over 1300 over southern mississippi and southern alabama then it grows up to Panhandle, florida southern alabama and goes towards georgia and this is a strong group of cape and if you look at your cells you will see that there is some cells in that time and it is passing by with that strong uplift and it could be tornadic with that please be aware that these are some strong cells coming definitely can see some Water spouts or two, especially for southern Alabama or Panhandle of Florida. As you go all evening for tomorrow, and it just trains over southern Alabama, southern Mississippi, West Bank, Louisiana, and the Panhandle of Florida for a long time. A lot of storms, all the way to Thursday morning. And here's another look from the southeast as you go to tomorrow morning, 7, 8 o'clock. You have this strong pocket of Cape moving with these storms. But then the atmosphere fills with all these dew points. You get all this lift, and you get a lot of dew points. It's in the high 60s for all of y'all. And as you go through your helicity tracks for the southeast, which gives you your wind direction and change with height. You can see these storms do blast through southern Alabama for tomorrow morning. Then as you go through the noontime and on, it really picks up for central Alabama and central South Carolina. Very strong, long-lived cell that's going to be there. All the way to 5 p.m. for tomorrow. Then as we go into Thursday, we'll get more storms, get some long track lev cells all through the Panhandle of Florida, southern Georgia, bring a lot of rainfall, a lot of good chances for thunderstorms, guys. And these are some nasty little cells that is getting some shear with them as it moves through. All these little cells that you see moving through all afternoon for tomorrow for South Carolina, this is some nasty little cells, a little bean shape to it too. But they are getting shear is getting some nasty shear as they pull through with the strong dew points. So I do see a chances for tornadoes for South Carolina, and it does weaken down to North Carolina, but you do have a chance for the edge. But South Carolina is getting some strong cells that has getting a lot of strong shear in them. 
And you can see your chances for your tornadoes to grow when you look at your tornado perimeters as you go through today, this afternoon. Very small chances for southern Louisiana, southern Mississippi. It will be later on. But it starts brewing up early in the morning for Alabama, Florida Panhandle. Those cells carry all the way into Georgia by tomorrow morning, by 10, 11 o'clock. Then it grows for southern Georgia, southern South Carolina, and along the coast for North Carolina. With the worst time growing tomorrow from 1 p.m. all the way to 2 p.m. for South Carolina, 3 p.m. starts dying down, 4 and 5 p.m. So it will be bad all the way for South Carolina, southern Alabama, Georgia. Look how these cells just flow all across the south that's where your energy is even though you got thunderstorms coming up i will show y'all but you have these cells that's coming to the south and it does carry into florida panhandle then it flows to south carolina georgia and just flows for hours a lot of thunderstorms guys and these storms are bringing a lot of lightning with it as well as well as the snowfall potential for ohio and the northeast and i will go through that for you but you can see all morning long as you get all these lightning strikes for the south and the southeast, especially for Florida by this afternoon. Then it starts brewing up really good for South Carolina. But then we get our next round later tonight. And look at the lightning strikes that's coming with those cells I showed you. And they carry over into Alabama, Panama, Florida overnight. Then it starts growing. And look at the lightning strikes on that right there. I guarantee you, if that shows true right there, that that would be a water spout about to be a tornado possibly on land as it comes across the southeast by noon tomorrow with a lot of lightning but tomorrow morning it passes over south carolina georgia panhandle florida and then it stays around the panhandle of florida for all of wednesday and most of thursday as well because we do get that next line of storms and that covers a little bit of georgia but mostly all the precipitation is going into florida thursday morning lightning strikes going all south down florida towards miami all the way to the afternoon before it finally dissipates. And then again on Friday, you have a chance for these thunderstorms to come back to Florida. Once again, guys, so y'all looking at a couple of days of severe thunderstorms. Now, as these thunderstorms move through the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley and goes towards the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast, it will start becoming some possibly snowfall for Ohio by tomorrow morning. It's not looking like a lot as it goes into Pennsylvania also for tomorrow morning and carries to the Northeast bringing snowfall to y'all as well. And there's contradicting amounts of what you're going to get. And I'll show you what your average is. As we get that next storm that's going to brew in around Thursday and Friday, and it's bringing a swath of snow already with it. And I'm seeing a big hook with this. But here you are in the Northeast come tomorrow morning, definitely by 6, 7 o'clock. You have it across Ohio, Pennsylvania, Northern Jersey, New York City, Connecticut, Long Island. And it goes towards Rhode Island and Boston and Massachusetts by 11 o'clock. Gets all into the northeast for hours, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So it does get some rain, some ice for Long Island. Then it goes back to rainfall for y'all. And a lot of people is going to get snow. But it's not going to add up to a lot. And the rain amounts. So far, the heaviness is pretty heavy, guys. So far, it adds up for northern Louisiana, northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, eastern Tennessee still. One to two plus inches possible of rainfall. But as you go for tomorrow, then it's going to build up for the Florida Panhandle, southern Alabama, Georgia, and into a little bit of South Carolina as well. But that's all you can see with the NAM 3K is 60 hours. And this is going all the way into Friday also. But you can see the one to two inches of possible rainfall coming with it. And you can see at Corridor National Weather Service that it does add up to a heavy amount for southern Georgia, Florida Panhandle, just by Friday morning at 6 a.m. And it's starting to build on a Friday as you get those storms. So you can't see the full potential. And you can see with the GFS when you check all the way till Saturday to see what that Friday, Saturday storms adds up. It does add up to a lot. And this is showing anywhere from 5 to 6 inches for northern Florida, southern Georgia. And over 3 inches for southern Georgia. And when you look a little more, you'll see that it's actually spots of over 7 inches. And that's by Jacksonville and towards Tallahassee. Northern Florida, really hot spot for a lot of flooding all the way from Friday to Saturday as well. That's going to really add up. And here's the difference. When you look for the next five days, Euro shows Tallahassee all the way to Savannah, Georgia, over two inches. Jacksonville, Daytona Beach, all the way to Tampa, over two inches. A big hot spot of an area. 
GFS shows that it's going to be more consolidated and it's going to be heavier, more like southern Georgia and a panhandle of Florida, northern Florida, mostly five inches plus for Jacksonville. That's a lot of rainfall just within the next five days, and it is within five days. First three days, you're not getting much, and then two days later, that Friday and Saturday, bam, heavy rainfall. And your snowfall. This is your snowfall rating so far according to National Weather Service as that first system pushes through. And as that second one starts to bulge on in, heads towards Ohio Valley and stretches out. But so far, this is your amount that you're going to get just from this storm coming. And National Weather Service picks up very light amounts, just like what I showed you the other day. That Everybody's barely going to get one, maybe two inches. Not much. A lot of it is going to be rain for you guys. And GFS sees about the same, a little bit heavier on the one inch, but it's about the same, very light amounts of snow while we get that next system coming through and it is going to go all the way to the northeast. And it's still showing a little bit more chances for snow somewhat in the south, but just like I showed you in the ensemble yesterday, this is exactly how it looks today. The gray is all maybe an inch of snow, maybe northern Mississippi, northern Alabama for the deep south. Still got a chance for maybe a half an inch to an inch the DFW and it's lightened up on the heavy major snowfall in the Northeast. I'm sure that's going to get even lighter guys as we get a little bit closer and we get a little bit more accurate. But you can see how it lightened up on that next snowstorm that comes to y'all and it will come all the way until Saturday, Friday to Saturday for the heaviest amount. Plus the Euro sees it also very light amounts in the Northeast while you get that rainfall as well. And that next system, it brings it even more southern dip in that trough. And it's still showing major snowfall for the northeast. And it's showing you could get a swath of snow, one to four inches, as this cold air does come down. And when it goes to the northeast, that is going to be a major snowfall, 10 inches to a foot. And I'm still showing this is not true, guys. Even the NAM, when you look at the NAM on that next system, it does show there's a good chance, not only for this start to come in with this heavy snowfall, but there's a good chance for some heavy snowfall in the northeast. And it's showing instead of going way up on a high ridge like Euro, it's showing there's going to be a lazy ridge and be six, seven inches all across the coast of the northeast. But still, I'm showing this is not true. Now, when you look at all your ensembles, and for those that don't know, when somebody shows you a track and you see all these other lines that show you where the track could go, but the more likely track is the one that they tell you where this is probably going to go, that's called the controlled member. But every single line that you see on those pictures is a diagram you see here. Each one of these is one of those lines. And you can see for the most part, most of them show that you're not going to be getting a lot of snowfall. All the major snowfall is starting to push more and more towards Canada. Canada getting that major snowfall. There's a couple that show it could still hit the northeast, but it's all showing that most of it's going to go towards Canada. And if you look here, this is your control member. This is the most likely outcome of what's going to happen with all these members. And that gray you see there is anywhere from one to maybe two inches of snowfall. The blue is all two to three inches of snowfall, possibly for four for the darker colors. But this purple starts getting six inches plus towards northern New Hampshire and northern Maine towards Canada. Canada is going to get the bulk of this snowstorm. Because as you can see with the precipitation as this comes through, that there's a lot of precipitation as well. And this being a controlled member, you're not going to get a lot of rainfall. A lot of it is going to be in Atlantic Ocean or northern Maine into Canada, which will be snowfall. So the rainfall will be light amounts for y'all up to an inch and in all this yellow. The rest of it will be in Atlantic. And a quick update on the Arctic Oscillation of Cold Air coming. I told y'all I would update you. As you notice, we still have our cold air coming on this first storm. And when it goes to the northeast, it is bringing a little bit colder air than what it predicted yesterday. And that is why you're seeing a little more snowfall than when you saw yesterday's forecast. But if you remember the one that's coming in around the 21st, happens to be my birthday. You notice how you did a big dip yesterday with a lot of cold air. Look how much it retracted back. That's why I'm saying I never forecast that far with the cold temperatures. Okay, it's unpredictable. It'll be way down here one day, way up here the next. But for the first two storms, the northeast, your cold air has come down a little bit more than yesterday, bringing the chances for more snowfall. And when you look at the NAO, which lets you know you're going down to a big trough of a system or it's going up to the northeast on a high ridge, look at the difference from yesterday. All the way down here yesterday, look how much it retracted back. That's why I say you can't 
can't count on that being that far away. This, you need to take with a grain of salt. It will change. And that's all the information I have for you guys today. I hope I helped you in some way. If I have, please hit that like button. Help another. Let them know this information coming because it could be pretty serious for people you may even know it's on your friends list. <laughs> Thank you so much for your help. God bless every single one of you today. Hope you have a blessed Tuesday out there. Stay positive, stay happy, and you will have a happy day. Believe that. It is true. Psalm 66. Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. All the earth shall worship thee, and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name. Selah. Come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. He ruleth by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Selah. O oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard, which holdeth our soul in life, and suffereth not our feet to be moved. For thou, O oh God, has proved us, thou hast tried us as silver is tried. Thou broughtest us into the net, Thou laidest affliction upon our loins. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. I will go into thy house with burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows, which my lips have uttered, and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. I will offer unto thee burnt sacrifices of fatlings with the incense of rams. I will offer bullocks with goats. Selah. Come and hear, all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Amen. And for those that don't know, Selah means think about what you just heard. <laughs> but have a great day today. God bless every single one of you. Thank you so much for your time. I do hope that you did watch all the way through and show support. Thank you for those that have. In all power, all glory. <laughs> does go to Yahweh, the God of Jacob, our Father. And he loves you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, guys. Have a great day. God bless you all. I'll see you in the morning.